welcome back to fairies tutorials in today's episode we'll be looking at section two of the food nutrition and health syllabus stay tuned section two nutrition and health and in today's episode we'll be looking at contents one to three which is entitled principles of nutrition nutrition related problems and also the classification of nutrients now let us look at the focus points so we'll be looking at definition of key concepts functions and importance of food chemical elements that makes up food nutrition related health problems and also deficiency diseases now let us take a look at the concepts that will be explored in today's session so we have about six terms we have food digestion nutrients nutritional status nutrition and also nutritive value of food now take a minute are you able to define these terms do you know the definition of any of them well let us see if you are thinking on the correct path good so the first term that we'll be looking at is food now food may be defined as any solid or liquid which when swallowed and absorbed in the bloodstream will provide the body with one or more nutrients so any liquid or solid whether it may be swallowed and absorbed in our bloodstream will provide us with what one or more nutrients good the next term is nutrition nutrition may be defined as the study of nutrients and their relationship with food and the body good let's go again nutrition may be defined as the study of nutrients that we those nutrients are what the chemical substances that we get from food and their relationship with food and the body the next term is nutrients nutrients may be defined as chemical substances found in food for example vitamins and minerals and guess what they help to keep our body healthy the next term is nutritional status nutritional uh, nutritional status may be defined as an individual's personal health condition which reflects their need for nutrients and their use of them good awesome so someone nutritional status may be defined based on what the quality and the quantity of food eaten good next term is the nutritional value of food what does that mean or even based on this image that is being displayed before you even read the definition could you tell what the nutritional value of food means now this refers to the quantity range and quality of chemical substances that are found in a food and its impact on the body now what do we call the chemical substances that are found in food what are they they are called nutrients good all right now the next term that we'll be looking at is digestion the term digestion refer to the process by which food is changed in the alimentary tract into material suitable for assimilation into the body good now that we have set the foundation let us look what are the importance and function 
of food. Do you think you could operate without eating food? And for how long? What do you think? Why do you think food is important? And you, can you think of any functions of food? Good. Now, to satisfy hunger and to make us feel full. Two, it provides energy to perform daily tasks or functions. Now, have you ever been hungry before? Can you explain the feeling that you get? Do you have any energy? Can you think clearly? Good. Can you perform a physical activity task? Good. So food is very important. It also protects us from diseases because it is rich in the chemical substances, vitamins and minerals, and other nutrients with, which promotes growth for our body and help to what? Protects us, protect us from diseases. It also promotes growth and repair of body tissues. Good. And I know you may think of specific nutrients that does what? Because each nutrient have their own main functions. Good. But as we go on in this course, you will find out the different functions of each nutrient. Good. Now, it also regulates body processes. So we speak of enzymic digestion, utilizing glucose, uh, help to produce uh, insulin, good, all of those stuff. For our body to function and regulate the processes, we have to consume food. Now, let us look at the chemical elements that makes up food. Now, based on these letters, can you guess which chemical elements they stand for? So we have O, we have N, we have P, we have H, we have C, and we also have S. Now, which of these elements you think make up certain nutrients? Do you have any idea? Now, let us see if you are thinking on the correct path. Now, chemical elements that makes up food. Good, and we're looking at the nutrients, carbohydrates, lipids also known as fats and also proteins good now the elements that makes up carbohydrates and lipids or we may say carbohydrates and fats are the same so we have carbon hydrogen and also oxygen good and you find out that these elements are the same and you may also find out that carbohydrates and lipids have what? The same, actually, the same main function. Good. Now, proteins. Proteins are also made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And guess what? N for nitrogen and sometimes sulfur and phosphorus. Now, the N which stands for nitrogen, help proteins to what? Build and repair body tissues. While CHO, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen does what? Provides the body with energy. And remember that proteins are also what? A secondary source of energy. But as we go on to looking at the different types of nutrients in details, we'll explore these in more detail. Good? Now let us look at the nutrition related health problems. Now malnutrition may be defined as an incorrect or unbalanced intake of nutrients. Now oftentimes when persons think of malnutrition, they often think that it is the inadequate amount of nutrients. Good. But as it relates to malnutrition, it may be the incorrect or unbalanced. So persons may be overnourished or undernourished. And let us first look, look at undernutrition. Now, undernutrition refers to an insufficient total intake 
of nutrients, which simply means that the nutrients that are being uh, taken into the body is not enough to supply the body's needs. Good? And therefore, persons will become undernourished. There is also overnutrition. Overnutrition may be defined as a form of malnutrition in which the intake of nutrients is oversupplied. So persons are eating too much, consuming too much food, getting too much nutrients than the body actually needs or requires. Good. The amount of nutrients then exceeds the amount required for normal growth and development. Good. Now, let us now move on to deficiency diseases. Now, what are deficiency diseases? Have you ever heard the term before? Let us see if you're thinking accurately. A deficiency disease refers to any illness that is caused by a dietary deficiency of specific nutrients especially a vitamin or mineral, possibly stemming from insufficient intake, meaning that the diet doesn't have as much of that particular nutrient. The diet may have the nutrient, but guess what? There may be digestion problem or absorption problem, or the body is unable to utilize the nutrients that is being supplied. So it's very important for us to understand which nutrients work together so that proper absorption of a particular nutrient can take place. So for example, even with the mineral iron, good, you know that what, which nutrient do we have to take along with the mineral iron for it to be absorbed efficiently? If you said vitamin C, you are correct, or we may say, ascorbic acid very good now examples of deficiency diseases along with their respective nutrients whose lack results in the condition so first up we have beriberi and that is a lack of vitamin b1 there is also kwashiokar when there is a lack of protein goita when there's a lack of iodine anemia which is associated with a lack of mineral iron. Marasmus, which is also associated with a lack of protein. And this particularly happened in children. So marasmus and quashiokar affects mostly children. All right? Good. And there's also plegra, which is a lack of vitamin B3, scurvy, lack of vitamin C, rickets lack of vitamin D, and also osteoporosis, which is a lack of vitamin D, and also calcium. Also, phosphorus too may come into play. Now, let us look at these images. So, image one is a patient who has beriberi. The next image now is of children who have kwashiokar. Good? Next, this is what the goiter will look like in severe cases when the thyroid gland is swollen. There is also anemia when we speak of a lack of red blood cells in the body. There is also marasmus and as I said before, this affects children and it is caused by a lack of protein. There is also pellagra. pellagra right a lack of vitamin a and this has to do with the three d's so we speak of dementia we speak of dermatitis good and you may also find for vitamin c there is curvy for vitamin d there is rickets and rickets often affects children good Vitamin D also is associated with osteoporosis. And as you can see, the healthy bone versus the bone marrow that a person, that a person with osteoporosis will look like, right? And as the name porosis, osteoporosis meaning what? 
the bones become porous and brittle so if there's a fracture if there's a fall you may find that persons may easily get broken bones now let us look at the classification of nutrients there are two major classifications can you tell what they are let us see now first up we have macronutrients now what are the nutrients that are classified as macronutrients they are protein carbohydrates and fat and they are needed for growth energy and other important body functions all three macronutrients are necessary in certain amounts to ensure a functioning body and a healthy metabolism and where are they found right so proteins are found in meat fish eggs and legumes carbs can be found in fruits starches and vegetables and fats can be found in meat nuts and also dairy products and as you can see each gram of protein gives us what four calories same for carbs and fat has nine calories per gram good now the next is micronutrients good and micronutrients are minerals and vitamins and why are they called micronutrients can you tell what the prefix micro means small right awesome so micronutrients are needed in small amounts and these nutrients are vitamins and minerals good now pop quiz based on what we have just discussed you should be able to answer these questions define the following terms nutrition food digestion nutritive value of food deficiency diseases good outline four importance of food in the body describe two nutrition related health problems and also you should be able to complete this table so you should be able to tell which chemical elements makes up carbohydrates lipids or we may say fats and also protein you should be able to list five deficiency diseases and name the nutrient that is related or associated with each and finally you should be able to list two categories of nutrients and name the nutrient that falls under each category you have made it to the end of the video don't forget to like subscribe and also share with persons who you know will find this video useful thank you for making it fairest tutorials